Hi there, Tracy Brown, and another quick video for you all about um, something that I hear probably once a week around um, nutrition. So oftentimes I don't talk a lot about on my blog about nutrition because we probably all know enough, um, especially those of us who've had any struggles with food, we know enough about nutrition to get a well-balanced diet in, quote unquote, as well as um, probably be able to like really tune in to listen to all of the stuff that's out there on the internet to see what's right for us or not by listening to our bodies. But that being said, um, I'm going to create at least this one video, probably one, possibly two more, so probably two to three videos around um, how to decipher all the things that are going out, on out there around nutrition and what we should pay attention to and um, how to trust, like our instincts about those kind of things. So I thought that the first thing I would bring up um, is around the issue, issue of all like the functional medicine and functional nutrition. I do think that um, functional nutrition and functional medicine um, have a lot right in terms of um, looking at the whole picture of people and questioning whether um, um, like what's, you know, looking at how the impact of our food really is on us versus following a blanket kind of routine. Let's say if you um, have diabetes and they give you exchanges. And I think that stuff all is already helpful. Some people I think do better with like a normal quote unquote carb intake. Some people do better with a little bit lower intake. Still with not restricting overall calories, but experimenting with, with, with things. So I feel functional medicine has a little bit more right in terms of like, let's look at the individuality. My concern and so my issue with functional nutrition is that like most the things that I see online um, make people pretty afraid of like you can't eat certain things, you can't eat sugar, you can't eat gluten or wheat, you can't eat blah 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 blah. And so it feels like it's still doing another level of disservice to people who are, if they're not feeling well, um, isn't really helping with the healing process that much. So it's it's along the same lines of how they're getting this information out that it really bothers me. So. You know, let's say that you do have some gut or GI issues. It's a totally a good idea to look at what foods might be triggering and maybe even do um, some um, investigation of what's not working. Um, I'm very, really, I'm very, very careful in uh, my sessions with that with people because I want to help people figure out is this um, another reason to restrict, another way to restrict, or is this really like, hey, if we look at, let's say, dairy, um, is that really causing you the, the constipation? Let's maybe play with that for, a, let's say, three weeks. We'll do some um, very um, um, supervised elimination around that. And if that's truly the case, then of course, I would never expect somebody to continue to eat something that's actually causing them some distress or is hindering some kind of healing process that their body's trying to undergo. But I think that we all need to be very radically honest and responsible with ourselves around not using the latest fad that people say it's not good for us. It might have some basis in fact, but if we're making it the next miracle thing that's going to fix us and cure us, um, we're, we're really looking in the wrong direction because um, food can help, but it's certainly not going to heal everything. So I think we need to be really aware of that. Um, I do practice some nu functional nutrition, functional medicine in my practice, um, but I use it very lightly. And like I really look at the bigger picture of like somebody's relationship with food still. So... Um, yeah, do I per, per, like suggest some supplements? Totally. Do I have a few people that I'm working with with some food restrictions right now? Definitely. Um, but we're looking at it as a right now kind of thing versus it may not be a forever thing that you don't eat gluten or that you don't have dairy. That it may be a right now thing that your body just needs. And let's just see what happens later. So we don't have to get so married to like, I can never eat this or that again. Of course, there are exceptions. If you're, I have a client who's had celiac uh, well, many clients, but one in particular I'm thinking of, I mean, she can't eat that. And she knows that it's just going to make the next few days very really miserable. So she doesn't do it. Um, and she's learned how to, like, be very um, you know, loving toward herself from the fact that, like, I still want to get my needs met. I want to be social. I want to enjoy things. So um, part of her journey with that is learning how to, like, be radically brave about going to restaurants and say, hey, how do you prepare this food? And not feeling guilty or ashamed about that or feeling like that it's a burden for them or too much trouble because your needs are not too much trouble. And that's really the point of all these changes we might make with our food and um, 
movement routines or even supplement routines is that we're doing this out of self-care, not out of fear. And that's the whole point. Um, I definitely want to get more in depth with this topic in, in later um, videos, which is my goal. And I want to have some friends that I know that um, do this kind of work full time and do the research and all that kind of stuff. So I want to have some fun interviews with them in the coming weeks. So definitely vi come back visiting for that. So my one tip around like how do I take in all this information is look at the source. And are they trying to sell me a bunch of stuff? Even though that maybe some of their information is really good and might be mostly accurate to somewhat accurate, um, take a look, again, check back in with yourself. Like, are they telling me, trying to sell me a lot of stuff? Um, and even if, if some of their information and maybe some of their suggestions might be useful to me, how can I do this in a way where it's not being purposely restrictive to deny myself my full needs calorically as well as for pleasure and satisfaction? So be mindful of those two little things that come into play when we want to start um, changing our food intake from a nutrition, even medical perspective. So that's my two cents on functional medicine, which there will be more of. But for now, that's enough. And I will talk to you soon. Take care.